one of the most fascinating subjects I can think of, so please welcome him. Kayla Roberts is up here. How about a nice round of applause? Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, I'm Kayla Roberts of Zach Gross. We're here from Tokyo, Japan with our American division here, and we're very excited to show you a revolutionary product that we hope is going to change the pharmaceutical injectable uh, world. And it's, it's, it's going to introduce a very special polymer that some of you packaging makers may know, may not know. And some of you may not know that you can do an IV bag with it. So let's go ahead and get into it. First, I want to talk a little bit about the agenda for today. Uh, first, I want to talk a little bit about us, who we are, like who is Zacros. Um, I want to talk a little bit about some of the original ways that pharmaceutical injectables are currently made right now. Uh, currently made with glass, but let's talk about some of the complications with that. Then finally, I'm going to end with this bag and what makes it yeah, so special. Thought, uh, so, so let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, Zacros, our name actually comes from Greek. It uh, originated because we're one of the first people in Japan to bring in a laminating machine and actually begin to laminate films together to create multi-layered films and bring about various barrier properties and to bring that culture of that plastic and laminate into Japan. So we like to think we're the first and only, or the ultimate, standing on the front line. So that was the Z, and then Acro again, standing at the top before anyone else, taking those challenges and going in. That Zacros is kind of the DNA that makes us who we are. A little bit more about our company. Our original name uh, in Japanese is Fujimori Kogyo. We've been around for 105 years. We just celebrated our 105th birthday. We're very excited about that. Uh, we're about a $1 billion annual sales company. Uh, we divide our three different business divisions of packaging and packaging materials into construction businesses for industry, um, IT and electronics, meaning like protective films inside kind of uh, electronic devices as well as life sciences for like pharmaceuticals, foods, cosmetics, and stuff like that. Um, kind of zooming in on our entire um, product lineup, kind of focusing more on the life science business, I want to tell you specifically today about our pharmaceutical business. Um, but before that, just to show you a little bit of our total in Japan sales offices and production facilities. Uh, this is all, have any of you ever been to Japan? Okay, we've got a few. Mostly people go to probably Tokyo, Osaka, Kyoto, the, the big names, but we're scattered in some of the less known parks on the West Japan side. Where this is made specifically is Mie, which if you've been to West Japan, Osaka area, that's very close to where this is. So, talking a little bit more about the plant itself, what makes it uh, viable to make this. Um, it's extremely, put a screen just about this stuff. What makes this plant, um, it's our newest plant of all of the plants we have total. Um, we have a GMP-like policy of one room, one machine, which makes things very controllable. Um, there's a lot of risk um, avoiding, risk mitigating you can do through that. Um, just recently, we have the ISO 15378, one of the more difficult certificates for doing primary packaging for pharmaceuticals. I'd like to show you a little bit of overview picture of the uh, plant itself, just to kind of give you a more live feed image of what it's like. Um, just installed just recently, just a, several years ago. Um, we have like mainly the offices are over here, but all this is sales and manufacturing. I have an open lot over here for future space. Lots and lots of open space there. Um, everything is as much as possible automated. No people touching. We have the resin pellets being supplied by air tubes. Um, as much as possible, not going through human hands. Just again, that kind of GMP philosophy has been uh, incorporated into the facility. And this again is the actual filmmaking process itself, if you want to take a look at that. Uh, we do extruding of films. We do laminating of films. Uh, this specifically itself would be the casting, extruding out the film right here onto the cooling rolls. And some of your, if you're a home manufacturer, you've probably seen this in your day-to-day -day life. But I just want to show you what it's like in Japan, right? Um, we're not only located just in Japan, we're also located here in Newark, Delaware with Zacros America. We're making the famous Cubitainer or bag and box as some of you know. 
We're also getting into the pouch biz here in America. At the same time, we have a lot of different um, Asian facilities as well, uh, doing things in the life sciences area as well as the IT and information, um, I'm sorry, electronic device technology there. Um, introducing a little bit of some of our core technologies. Like I talked about, we do lamination, we do extruding, but just to reiterate, not only that, but printing, converting materials together, assembling. Some of you just saw that tubing just then, that was some single-use packages for making like biopharmaceuticals, those kind of tanks as well, we make those single-use packages. Um, and also some of the food commodities here, some liquid food for people that have um, some of the disabilities there, not being able to use their esophagus, we can use some of the liquid food as well. Uh, make monolayer films as well, but we'll go ahead and skip that for now. Again, zooming in on more and more of our healthcare products. I especially want to zoom in here on the IV bags today, but just want to show you a little bit at the same time of the other products we're making. Zoom in. Let's talk a little bit more about the inside of this. Let's talk about the pharmaceutical that's going inside of this actual bag. So right now, in the US market and many places in the world, Injectable pharmaceuticals are using PVC bags, PP bags, I believe PE as well, is the typical common materials used in using IV bags. But there is a problem with the drug contact layer. If you're not careful, if you have a very toxic or a highly pharmacologically active substance, it begins to eat away at the plastic on the inside and starts to melt that into the solution, sometimes it can ruin the solution. Also, the active ingredients, the active, um, yeah, the active ingredients inside the pharmaceutical itself can begin to absorb into the plastic and it loses some of its original potency. So all of those things, right here I have written is interaction. Interaction with the drug contact layer. How is the product interacting with the, the film? That's elution and absorption. Um, some people say E and L, so that's extractables and leachables. That's probably the more common term, right? Extractables and leachables. We, we want to call it interaction. So typically, originally a long, long time ago, yeah, I'm sorry, now, for some, more the, some of the more dangerous pharmaceuticals is, what we need to do is have it stored in glass vials and ampules, right? So it's stored in a granule form and like a powder and you need to mix that at the time of administration. But what's good about glass, although it's, although it's very safe and it's not, it's not going to interact, it's gonna, not going to play around with the, the contents of the bag, right? Of the container. It's actually very breakable. When you drop glass, some of the caustic materials can get on you, can get on the medical worker, can cause issues there. Glass is very hard to ship. It's very hard to work with. So there are some good and some bad with glass. You store stability, but there's a lot of bad things too, right? Plastic is out there too, right? We have syringes, we have some containers that could hold potentially some pharmaceuticals, but again, those caustic materials inside, eating at the plastic will cause it to use extractables and leachables and cause those problems with no stability. So a lot of pharmaceutical makers don't want to work with plastic and don't want to keep their products in liquid form because plastics are causing so much trouble with stability. So we took the best of both worlds and we made this. We made a glass-like bag that uses cyclic olefin polymer, maybe some of you know it as COP, on the innermost layer that's in the drug content layer and made it into a flexible IV bag. So although right now PVC, PP, and PE are the different types of common IV bags, we think this IV bag is going to be the solution that is going to encourage more pharmaceutical manufacturers to make their product in liquid form. Because hey, it's COP, it's glass-like, maybe our liquid will be okay in, li in liquid form. So what makes this bag good? It, this design actually has a rubber cap that goes on top of it. You can just stick it with a needle and administer to the patient right away. So you have, you can have ready to administer. Just keep the pharmaceutical in a ready to use form. Just stick it and administer to the patient in less than a minute. We 
We do this in Japan right now with this bag. Another good point of this is that there's no mixing with the granules and the saline solution, right? The medical workers have a big table, they're working with their different components. Sometimes they make mistakes, sometimes people die, sometimes they drop the vial and it breaks. All of these mistakes, we can get rid of those, having ready to mix, I'm sorry, ready to administer. And again, the COP and the inner layer makes this stable with the liquid drug product, but I can drop it. No problem, right? Those are some of the characteristics. Some of you that are more on the manufacturing side, perhaps you're interested how we make this kind of thing. Um, not going into too much detail, but a very high level. This is the process of extruding resin. I'm gonna break it down for people that don't do manufacturing and wanna know and need to know. Um, originally, plastic will come in this pellet form and they'll melt down at a high temperature. This, inside this machine right here, we have usually a hopper. We pour the pellets in. There's a giant screw that's pushing these pellets through at a very high temperature and they're melting and coming out at an even pace. And they come out at the end and that's extrusion. I know I'm at a packaging show, but I just want to cover it one time. And what we do is called co-extruding, which means mixing multiple pellets at the same time to bring about different kinds of effects inside the material for more stability, more glass-like property, those kind of things we can bring about with co-extruding. That's one of our specialties. Um, just to shoot a simple example, one example is two materials, three layers. We can do A, B, A. Three materials, five layers. We can go A, B, C, A, B, or something like that. Taking a look at the surface of this and zooming in on the dumpins or the uh, zooming in on the cut form. If you cut this bag in half and you looked at it in a microscope, so you see that there's some lettering right here. There's the ink on the top layer. Here is the PP layer to bring about stability. You don't want to just do COP only. It's glass-like and brittle, it'll break. But if you have PP holding it steady, the various um, ink substrate and the ink constituents will begin to seep through the layers, right? Because PP will absorb those. But our NI, we call it NI, that's COP. We just want to call it NI because it's a code name. It means non-interactive. The NI will stop those inks from getting into your pharmaceutical. That's the barrier layer. So again, the drug content layer is COP, so no ink going in, no pharmaceutical leaching out into the plastic, all maintaining that 100% potency, right? One example is nitroglycerin. Nitroglycerin was originally sold in 2006, starting as an ampule form. You had to mix it out with saline solution before you administer it. We made the back form of this for our pharmaceutical customer and we began to sell that in 2006, almost at the same time. Let's see what happened to sales. Of course, when it first comes out in the ampule form, it's very popular, we need it, let's buy it. But we realized right away, working with ampules is kind of hard, we break it, it's inconvenient, we might make mistakes. What if we just had it in ready to administer form, and people saw the goodness of it, and immediately, as soon as we entered the market, it's a paradigm shift in the sales there. People like ready to administer. They like the ease of use. I think that speaks for itself. Next is uh, Enadavon. I don't know if any of you are aware of this, but it's a very um, popular pioneer medicine right now in the US. Um, it's used to treat ALS by scavenging for free radicals in the body. Let's say, for example, we're in the emergency room and someone's going into that kind of state of shock. We need to administer right away, right? Ready to go, ready to administer. Versus, let's take time to mix it from the ampule, right? Let's see what happened in sales. I made a mistake. This is not working with the ampule versus that. It's talking about the pioneer versus the generic, but it's a little bit different. But just to show you that the original uh, pioneer was made, and from when we started selling the generic in Japan, it took off in 2011, and immediately we overtook sales and all with this exact bag itself. Now I want to tell you about the performance of the bag. Just how good is it? Just how good is that 
keeping the potency of the material. Let's, let's take a look at an example of nitroglycerin. Remember, nitroglycerin has active ingredients. They're going to be trying to leach out of the bag. With, with glass, you have no loss of potency, right? It's glass. Nothing's going to leach out. But with something like LLDPE, um, low linear density polyethylene, is starting to seep out, right? We're losing some potency of the actual drug over time. It's absorbing out. Some of the plastic is melting out into the solution. What about our bag? We have two different types. The one I'm showing here is specifically the innermost type. I won't explain the two different types for today, but I just want to, sh want to show you the performance is so close to glass. So we're keeping that active ingredient just as good as glass does. What is it? <clears throat> Next, I'm talking gonna, about I'm the uh, edible in the same way. Performance is up there with glass, almost at 100. Over a period of six weeks, we're not losing some of that potency of the original drug. So a lot of people see this. We sell three million of these a year in, in Japan of this exact product. Okay. Some of these I've mentioned, the different drugs, are some of the more sensitive. They're more likely to elute, more likely to absorb out the plastic. But there is numerous possibilities for this application. This is the slide where I want you guys to kind of use your imagination. Could you see a product going into this that's sensitive? Something that's very dense in value? I don't know. Maybe not even a pharmaceutical, maybe a nutraceutical, maybe something that has very sensitive drug that tends to leak out or something. Um, maybe it's very minute amounts of active ingredient to the point where if you lose just a little bit of active ingredient, you lose the whole purpose of the drug. If you see something here that you think could go into this bag, by all means, we'd love for you to communicate that to us and we can talk about this bag's viability for that product or your customer's product. And again, COP is, doesn't stop just at this bag itself. There are some other products in development that we can do with different shapes and forms. It has a lot of potential for other applications, things like vitamins, things like cosmetics, a kind of POCT, point of care testing kit we could make and have reagents and dilutants and drugs all in one package and the doctor could mix them all together on point with this patient's uh, sample and be able to, I don't know, potentially view them, inspect them right on the spot, have that conversation with the patient. We could have that kind of uh, imaginatory talk together and um, think of some other uses for this just even beside pharmaceuticals. We are right nearby. If you want to stop by and ask more questions about this, Zagros also makes, again, those cubic tapes and box, bag and boxes. Um, we can do anything from flexible packaging for ph pharmaceuticals, liquids of any kind, and we'd love to talk to you. But thanks so much for hearing me out today, guys.